You want to destroy Hezbollah? Israel could do it in weeks if it was willing to inflict the casualties on the enemy that such a victory would necessitate. Israel's not willing to inflict those casualties because it doesn't have the moral fiber, the moral backbone to do it. Neither does America. That's why it can't win. That's why we didn't win in Iraq. That's why we're not winning in Syria. That's why we're going to hightail it out of the Middle East with our tail between our legs and only emboldened, further emboldened. The radicals, the, the, the nuts, the crazies, the, the, the committed Islamists to come after us and come attack us at home and come and kill us wherever we might be. There's a lull right now because ISIS was defeated and because, you know, Al-Qaeda is on its back legs in Afghanistan. But that won't last as we retreat, as we won't win, as we refuse to win. They will come back. They will keep coming back. They will keep killing us until we have a president who actually has the courage, actually has the strategy to win. What you need right now is a strategy. What you need right now is foreign policy. What you need right now is generals who know how to win wars. This administration has none of those. No conception of foreign policy. No strategy for dealing with the Middle East. Zero. Negative. I mean, day by day it changes. No strategy. No will to win. No concept of what winning looks like. And I fear no qualified generals to actually execute it. The, the few generals that were part of this administration, none of whom I particularly liked, but have all left because they couldn't handle the kind of random pragmatism that this administration's foreign policy embodies. So no, what we need is a strategy for the Middle East. What we need is a way to defeat our enemies. What we need is not to run away with a tail between our legs, but to re-energize re our commitment, not to bring democracy to the Middle East. I don't care about democracy to the Middle East. Not to make these countries prosperous or Western or whatever, anything. A strategy, strategy to win, to destroy our enemies. That's it. Strategy is not central planning. And war is not economics. All right. I've had enough of that topic. Um, let's see. We've got a bunch of super chat questions, and then I've got a, a few economic points I want to make. Okay. What do you think of John Bolton, Secretary of State? Well, he's not, any, he's not anymore. He was never Secretary of State. He was the National Security Advisor, but he has resigned. He's one of the one of the many adults who have resigned from this administration, in shame, I think, for ever being involved. Is there anything you dislike about his foreign policy? Yes, there's a number of things I dislike about John Bolton's foreign policy, although generally I, I agree with much of it. Uh, Bolton is, let's see, way too um, nationalistic. He is a, he, he, hate, he, he believed that uh, Snowden, should be tried for treason. I, I don't believe that. So he believes that it's okay to listen in on Americans, to get vast quantities of data on Americans in order to make us safer. He's willing to give up way too much liberty in order to so supposedly give us safety. I think that's a huge mistake. I also don't think Bolton... I mean, maybe in private he would say this, but I don't know that Bolton is quite willing to be as tough as I think one needs to be in, um, in the Middle East in order to win. Now, he knows the threat. He understands the threat. Uh, and he, he's often written good stuff about the threats in the Middle East. I don't think Bolton, uh, you know, I don't know Bolton's position on other countries. But I, I'll give you another example about Trump in, in foreign policy. So the complaint is we have troops all over the world. Last I looked, we had troops in 120 different countries. Why do we have those troops in 120 different countries? Why hasn't Trump done anything about that? Why have those troops not been brought home? They're troops in 120 different countries. 
We had special forces dying in the middle of Africa. We have special forces in Kenya and Uganda. We have special forces all over Asia. If you're really committed to an America first strategy, if you're really committed to bringing the troops home, start with all those 120 countries. Start with all those places where we don't have organized, organized groups and governments who seek to do harm to Americans. Don't start with the Middle East. Start with Africa. Start with Asia. Start with lots of different places. Um, so, you know, I, I, John Bolton was about as good of a, of, a, of a national security advisor that I think you could get in the world in which we live. Again, I don't know. I don't know much about him beyond the Middle East. I've met him a few times. Um, I, I, after 9-11, I thought he was, he was one of the better people. Um, and, uh, you know, people call him a warmonger. And, and that's fine, but you know, sometimes you have to go to war. Sometimes war is necessary. And it, the idea that war is never necessary, that war is never required, is just false. Pacifism will kill you. Now, you could argue about whether which war was necessary when, but the fact is the United States was attacked over and over and over again whether embassies abroad or right here in the U.S. over and over again over the, since 1979. And until, until you actually do something about it, until you're actually willing to punish those responsible, that will continue. And the only job of the U.S. government, the only job of the U.S. government, is to protect the individual rights, the property, the lives of Americans. And if the lives of Americans are threatened, by a foreign power, by foreign organizations, then the one job, the one job that the U.S. government has is to go overseas and destroy them. That's it. We can argue about how you do it. We can argue about strategy on how to do it. But that's what needs to be done. And to the extent John Bolton understood that after 9-11, now, again, I'm not endorsing everything he stood for. There's certain things I strongly disagree with him. But again, one of the better people on this issue. And more realistic than most. I don't think John Bolton bought into the whole bring democracy to the Middle East. And if he did, I clearly disagree with him on that. I believe, I'll say it one more time, you go, you crush the enemy, you inflict as much pain on them as possible, and you come home. You come home. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the Super Chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, Please take this opportunity, go to yourrunbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...